There you go. Shoot a couple more times. Jeepers! Jeepers! It's pretty good. Good trigger control. Peasants! Good muzzle awareness. Okay, so let's get into it, guys. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about EDC, everyday carry. So on the internet, you can find a million different ways that people who do EDC. Some people have super gucci dot systems. Some people have very simplified systems. Me, I'm a little bit more on the simplistic side. So I've got a couple different items out here, kind of show you what I carry, kind of explain some of my reasoning behind it. You do can agree, disagree, whatever, leave your comments down below. You guys know the drill. So EDC. Well, every good EDC starts off with a decent everyday carry belt, in my opinion. It's really hard to carry a firearm if you with a bad belt. So what I have here, this is the Core Essentials EDC belt. It's a one and a half inch belt. The cool thing about this is that it ratchets. You can down to your size. You can see on the belt here, you've got these ratchets. They go into the belt mechanism itself, into the buckle. You can ratchet it down, I'll show you on the backside. Pull down to your different waist uh, sizes, and then you can hit the release right here, and you can release the belt. I'm a big fan of Core Essentials. The cool thing about these is on the buckle end of the belt, you have this thing comes out much, this thing came much larger, several, several inches larger. I think they go all the way out to like a 52 inch waist size, and basically they have it marked every so often, about every inch where you can cut the belt and then you feed it into the mechanism. So as you gain or lose weight, you can adjust this. As well as not having to worry about notches, just being able to feed it through here. You can feed it through to the perfect size and then release it, take it off. Super easy, super simple. Ton of different options for the belt buckles on here. But core essentials, great belts, good way to go with that. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. What firearm do I, am I carrying on a daily basis? Normally, I am carrying a Glock 26. So the Glock 26 is the subcompact, double stack Glock 9mm. This guy holds 10 rounds in the magazine normally with the standard 10 round mags. I like to carry with a 12 rounder instead and it gives me a little extra finger groove. You can see there the little extra bits to put my hands on. I'm a big dude. Holding it like this is really the only way to do it without that. I don't have that pinky on there, so it can get kind of difficult. So I like having that extra pinky groove. I've got Glock night sights on here. They came with the gun. I didn't have to install them afterwards. I just came that way, so it's pretty awesome. Got this on a blue label deal back when I was in the military. So I really like this guy. I've been carrying it for a long time. Uh, this is also a Gen 4 Glock 26. I forgot to mention that. So Gen 24 Glock 26. I like this because it fits my hand well. It's small and concealable. Uh, Glock 43, Glock 43X was basically, you know, skinny version of this guy. Uh, those obviously are a lot easier to conceal. I like having the double stack magazines, so that way I can just swap out with a larger mag. So obviously it sticks out a little bit on the bottom there, but the ability to be able to run different magazines like that is pretty awesome. So I'm a big fan of the double stack locks. That being said, Depending on the type of year, time of the year, what I'm wearing or what the occasion is, I might step up my uh, carry gun to my Glock 19. So my Glock 19 is the Gen 5 Glock 19. I have the Trigicon night sights on here. I've got the I-Dot sights. I've got the I-Dot sights. You can kind of see there, bright orange front sight, square notch with a single rear night sight. Another feature that I have is I can't remember who makes this, I think it's Cagworks, it has a, this aftermarket slide release that rides high on the firearm. So, do this left-handed. I have to come up off of it. I like riding high with my thumb, so I don't get in the way, I have to do that. So I really like having that as well on my carry gun. As far as sights and that one slide release on this one firearm, those are the only things that I've changed to the guns. Some people like changing triggers, different things like that. I'm not a huge fan of that for an everyday carry gun. I know that Glocks work right out of the box. The triggers are not fantastic, of course. That's one of the biggest complaints I think most people have about the Glock family of firearms is the trigger, but I really don't like messing with a lot of that stuff. I know there's plenty of ways to do it, and there's plenty of safe ways to do it, and ways that'll make it functional and reliable. I'm just not a big fan of doing it myself. So, as far as holsters go, I forgot to mention for my Glock 26, I use a, uh, Kydex Blade Tech simple holster with the belt loop. Nothing too crazy or fancy. And then I have a 1791 gun leather holster for my Glock 19. 
I also have a Raven Vanguard concealment holster that is somewhere in my safe right now. I don't use it all that often, but it's something I usually uh, carry with if I had to wear like a tucked in collared shirt or look nicer because it's an easier way to carry. That'll fit both my 26 and my 19. One thing you may have noticed is I don't have any lights on my guns. So it's not necessarily a huge, like I'm against lights or anything on the guns. It's just for me, I like having the slim down nature of not having the light on the gun. It makes it a lot easier to conceal. Holster options become a little bit more varied at that point, a little bit wider. That is something I am working on. I'm getting a holster here soon that is going to be a light bearing holster so I can have lights on those. The Glock 26 is a little hard to put a light on. Pretty much I think you have the TLR6, I think it is. And uh, that kind of fits on the trigger guard for that. For the Glock 19, there's a myriad of lights out there. I just haven't got a holster for it. I've been uh, carrying it without a light for a long time. Just a personal preference thing. Not, not necessarily against it at all. I definitely see the benefit of having a light on there. At, one point, uh, at some point in time, I will put a light on that gun. So outside of the gun, what else do we have? Well, the other thing that I carry is a tourniquet. So I've got a big cat tourniquet here, just a standard cat tourniquet. I like to have a tourniquet on me. I usually throw this in a, in a pocket. I like to wear cargo pants a lot of times because I like having pockets. I got kids, so I'm always carrying my stuff, my wife's stuff, my kids' stuff all the time. So car don't knock cargo pants <laughs> or cargo shorts. I'm a dad, that's what I do. Uh, so I have a cat uh, tourniquet here. I can't remember which generation this is, but uh, usually what I'll do is for my everyday carry tourniquets, I, since I'm carrying them all the time, they get beat up, they get worn out. If they do get to a point where I don't feel like they are necessarily entirely feasible, or that they, I feel like for some reason I just don't trust it as much anymore, I will rotate that out to my training kit and use this for training medical with my friends, and then I will carry a new tourniquet. So I do like to have a tourniquet on me, and I will tell you from personal experience, I have found way more reasons to carry a tourniquet than I have to carry a firearm. I do believe you should have a firearm, absolutely, but um, I've personally stopped over with like to several accidents to where grabbing an IFAC out of my car and a tourniquet was definitely way more helpful than grabbing my Glock 19. So you will use medical way more than you will probably ever use a firearm. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, like a boo-boo kit in your vehicle or something like that if you need it. As far as everyday carry items, I usually don't carry a full IFAC on me. I usually have one uh, where I work. There's usually one at work in the vehicle I use for work or in my personal vehicle, so in, in my house. So I usually have them around me. So I usually carry a tourniquet, uh, that maybe a handful of band-aids in the vehicle, something like that as well, in addition to an IFAC, but normally just this, when it comes to medical anyway. Another cool thing I carry, uh, this deal here usually rides in my pocket. This is a cell phone charger. It's just a simple USB on one end, Android plug-in on the other. It's something to where I am notorious for forgetting to grab a cell phone charger and my phone dying or something like that. Uh, so. I started carrying one of these in my pocket, so I always have something, at least to charge my phone in my car or something like that. With with my kids, iPads, different things like that. Um, cell phone chargers, the you know, their tablets, whatever. Cell phone chargers are a commodity in my house that are always missing or under a couch or in a kid's toy box. So I'm always losing them. So I like to have this with me, so I always have something. Other items, I also have a lighter. So I don't smoke. Um, don't really do that, but uh, I do have friends that smoke. I do have uh, other reasons to carry a lighter as well. So whether you got a buddy that who does smoke might need a light, something like that. You need to light something, um, whether it be start a fire, anything like that. Also, lighters are usually accepted in a majority of places where weapons are not. The nice thing is, is that you can use a lighter as a weapon. Someone goes and grab you, choke you around, something like that. You light them up underneath their arm like that real good. I mean, they're going <laughs> to they're gonna let go. Now, as far as some of the other items, obviously simple things like a watch. Uh, it's just a cheap Casio Walmart watch. Actually, we originally got this for my son and then he got a different one for Christmas, so I just carry this now. I usually don't have a G-Shock, but my G-Shock finally died on me. I haven't gone around to get a new one, so. Cheap little Casio watch works for me. I'm not super big on carrying fancy watches, anything like that. Uh, I think the $80 G-Shock is the most expensive watch I've ever owned in my life, so pretty simple bird when it comes to that kind of stuff. So the other things I carry are a light. So I, because I don't have a light on my gun, I like to have a flashlight in my pocket. So I definitely see the benefit of having a light on a gun, but I also see the benefit of having a handheld light. So some of the lights I carry, this is one of the 511 EDC lights. It's uh, all the pocket clips and all of, almost all of my lights are broken because I get them snagged on doors or something like that because I'm a big clumsy dude. So anyway, this runs off of, I think two AAAs. It's a nice, simple light. It's got a little push pad button right here. Small, fits in your hand. Uh, I've practiced with this during uh, different shooting drills, things like that. It's pretty easy to, to manipulate and run between your hands. 
while you're running a firearm. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but you know, pretty simple, easy to use. Nice, small, compact, doesn't take up a whole lot of space. I usually like to carry this in my pocket uh, all the time. Some of the other options that I carry is I have a Pelican light. So this is made by Pelican. It's the PM6-3320. I normally have this roll around in my vehicle, so I usually have it with me floating around all the time as in my EDC light. It's not super bright. It's more incandescent than anything, but it works for working around my vehicle, working around areas where I need a little bit of light, but I don't need to be super bright like my carry light. So this is another one I'll usually carry, or I'll carry this as a backup when I'm at work. So this is another great light for that. It's not super expensive either. I think these are like 40 bucks. Uh, it could be a little bit wrong on that price. It might've come up in the recent years, but this Pelican light, pretty sweet. I like to run that. And then the other one, I've just got a cheap set of lights that I bought long years ago. These are little cheap Amazon lights, the little telescoping ones here to where they telescope down. They're a cheap little LED. They're a couple bucks for like four or five of these on Amazon. Got them for having around the house usually throw one in my pocket if I want you know if I'm missing one of these that's the other thing is like coming home emptying my pockets I try to put myself in the same spot every night so we don't lose it but I've got kids they come in stuff goes missing and anyone who has kids knows that stuff unless you're putting it in a safe like stuff disappears all the time kid needs a light to go look under the couch for something whatever uh so sometimes I'll rotate through my lights and swatch switch stuff out like that but I always try to have some kind of light with me now as far as Going back to kind of the gun world, with the guns, uh, like I said, the Glock 26 I carry with a 12 round mag, the Glock 19 I carry with a 15 round magazine. I also try to carry at least one spare magazine with me. I usually have a spare magazine so floating around the center console of my vehicle somewhere, but as far as on my body, I will carry one physically on my body. So with that, there's two different ways I mainly carry these magazines. I don't just slap them in a little pocket. I usually use either the 1791 Snag Mag. The 1791 Snag Mag. So this thing has a pocket clip here and it's just a simple Kydex mag holder. Just take the magazine out, slide it in, slap it in your pocket. It's got this little piece here to kind of push your pocket away to make grabbing that magazine nice and easy. You could tie off something to it if you wanted to as a quick pull, but I like to carry this. This one, uh, this size here, this is holding the 15 round Glock 19 magazine. So I usually have a 15 round or a 17 round magazine as a backup. The other thing too, this is a knockoff Neomag. So I like Neomag stuff, I just don't like paying 40 bucks for it. This is like a $15 Amazon knockoff. I'll try to have a link to it somewhere if I can find it. Just a simple magnet, wraps around, slaps on to the thing, run the pocket clip, and the nice thing is when you have this in your pocket, it doesn't really look like a magazine because that sticks up so high, it mostly just looks like a pocket knife a lot of the times and doesn't take up a lot of space. Nice and simple, easy to use mag carrier. So the reason I generally have a spare magazine on me is one, I don't really necessarily see myself getting into a scenario where I'm required to, to save my life by using all 30 rounds between two Glock 19 magazines or 27 between a 12 rounder and a 15 round backup magazine. But God forbid I ever get in that situation, I do have at least two magazines with me. On top of that, the biggest thing out as well is due to maybe more due to mechanical malfunction. I trust my equipment, I trust my stuff, I train with it, I practice with it, I don't imagine it failing. However, if it were to fail, I have a spare magazine that is much easier in the heat of the moment to instead of you know tap rack bang, just strip out the bad magazine, slap in a new one rack the slide and you're good to go again. So, so if you're in a fight for your life type scenario and that kind of you, you need to do that type of mag change, boom, there you go. Also, it is kind of nice to have the extra rounds on hand as a, both as a comfort and also in the fact that you're probably gonna crap your pants a little bit when things go south. You might have some shots that don't necessarily ring true and go off target. So mm -hmm. God forbid you ever have to get to the point where you need to do a reload, you can reload and be ready for the fight. So like I said, I usually like to have at least one spare magazine with me. Sometimes I'll have more, like maybe some, a spare one in the vehicle, usually in the center console, something like that, but uh, by vehicle, but I will at least have close to 30 rounds on my body. Now, the other part of that too, that I like to carry is pocket knife. When it comes to pocket knives, uh, kind of depends on the mood I'm in. So my buddy who got me into knives, got me into these big cleaver blades. This is a Civivi. Don't ask for model name, names and numbers because I don't remember. But uh, I kind of like this big cleaver type of blade here. This one, obviously, for me, a little bit more for fun, for show, things like that. I'm not necessarily grabbing this for any type of tactical use, but I really like the knife, and sometimes I'll have that with me. 
Um, same thing goes for my mini Kaiser blade. This guy here is again, uh, I think this is a, uh, yeah, this is a Kaiser blade. Um, I'm not a huge knife guy, so you know, don't hate me for that. But again, these blades for me, not entirely practical, but I like having them. I think they're cool. I carry them, use them for opening boxes and like that. More practical knife, knives I'll generally carry is my Spider Codelica. So I've got the little camo grip one. I, uh, again, pocket, the pocket clips on this are all broken, but I used to carry my Spider Codelica, um, usually in addition to one of these or uh, just on its own. If I'm actually wanting to carry something practical, it's generally the Spider Codelica. Finally, the last thing I usually like to have um, on me, preferably sometimes, at least not if it's not on me, in close proximity to where I can technically kind of count it as an EDC, even though it might not necessarily be on my body, is a good multi-tool. So cool things I like to carry on me is a cool little uh, multi-tool, whether it be physically on my person or uh, whether it be in my vehicle, something that's where I can technically kind of count it as an EDC. I like to have one of those. So this guy opens up pretty cool. So you've got two different things that open up here. You can get to a set of pliers and wire cutters off this. And this is supplied to me by the company Next Torch, the same guys that sent out that flashbang grenade if you guys follow the channel. Uh, pretty cool. So you've got the set of wire cutters and pliers. Those fold up. You can run a pair of trauma shears, which is, that's actually pretty rad to have a pair of those already on you. As well as, as far as the other external things, push a button here and you've got a set of wire cutters. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, you also have your standard assortment of blades and saws and screwdrivers and such throughout the knife. So you get all the normal things you normally get with the multi-tool as well as a few extra. So I like having this on me. You do have the pocket clip if you want to carry it as a knife. Sometimes I'll do that in place of the knife. Like I said, I usually like to have it either on me or at least relatively near me enough to count as an EDC, even if it may not necessarily be on my person all the time. And then finally, you can really follow it up with my keys and a set of cheap set of sunglasses. This was meant to be a quick video that obviously turned out to be a little bit longer than I had hoped for. That being said, um, all of the items here, like nothing super crazy, nothing fancy. I don't have a red dot on my carry gun. I don't have a light on my carry gun. It's not that I'm against them or anything. It's just like the models I happen to have for my carry gun. I got those before I ever you know, got into red dots on pistols and I continued to carry them after that. I haven't gone out to buy a new gun or a new sliding or things like that. They've served me pretty well. I definitely see the reason for it. My wife, she does have a, she has a light and a dot on her pistol. She carries a 365 with a dot and a light. Like more power to her, nothing wrong against it. For me, it's just with the simplicity. I like, I'm a, sim I'm a simple animal. I like simplicity. I like it set up the way it is. I like having my handheld flashlights. That being said, the only upgrade I will probably do in the future is putting a TLR-1 or a Surefire X300 on my carry gun so I have a light on my gun. Outside of that, I feel pretty set. I feel pretty comfortable. I know you guys out there probably have differences of opinions with some of these items. Feel free to put those down in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, you know the deal. And thank you guys for the watching. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Have a good one.